working through all four stitches on the Burnett Funlock B42 cover stitch and chain stitch. So we've done with all three needles and four threads in this machine. We took out the right needle for a narrow version of a two needle cover stitch. And now I'm gonna actually put the needle I took out to get the wide version of the two needle cover stitch back in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my thread back on. Remember quality thread makes such a difference when you're working with lots of different stretchy fabrics. So don't skimp, skimp on threads. That is something that really can make a difference. And then don't forget that we do have a needle helper to help put the needle back in place. So on the end of your needle threader, you have a little hole, which we can drop that needle down. I am going to make sure I can feel the flat side because flat side needs to go to the back. And then I'm also reminded that the needles are all different heights. So so the left one's always the highest one, the center one not as high, and then this last one's kind of the one that is the lowest. So to help you out, make sure you lower the presser foot down, and then you can take the holder, place the needle down in the foot, and then come up right next to the E, because it's C, D, and E needle holder. I had tightened it from before, so I'm loosening it, sliding it all the way up. I can also make sure that it is as high as it'll go. If you ever have any troubles and you've just changed needles and things were working perfectly before you changed them, make sure that all the needles got up as high as they were supposed to go. Now for this wider cover stitch, I'm actually going to take out the center needle. I am a fan of actually uh, taking out the needle. I know you can leave the needle in there, and but it is gonna make a hole. So I don't know if you wanna have that extra hole, usually you don't. Um, so definitely take it out uh, before you stitch. I guess on some fabrics it might not matter, so you can use that choice. So this time C, D, and E, the D needle is getting removed, so I'm loosening it, dropping it into that cute little holder, tightening up the screw so it doesn't work its way loose, and then continuing to thread the blue thread back into position. I'll use that needle threader one more time just to make my life super easy here. Remember, find the notch at the top, slide this into his mouth like a horse's bridle, slide down the needle until it pushes itself all the way in, and then just pull the loop through. So super easy way to change threads as you're working on different fabric colors. It'll be fun to compare the narrow version of the cover stitch to the wider version of the cover stitch. Make sure you lift up your presser foot and start on the fabric. It really doesn't matter where your threads are placed. They'll go ahead and kind of work themselves down into the foot, but if they are bothering you, you can always come in and kind of give them a quick little haircut so they'll go down and underneath a little bit quicker. So let's talk about why you would use a wider cover stitch versus a narrower cover stitch. You'll definitely want to use it on fabrics that are a little bit more sturdy because if you're doing it on a hem, you are usually using two layers of fabric and the fabric would be, it has the possibility of tunneling. So there's a lot of distance here. And so on a lightweight fa fabric, you might actually get it to kind of pinch together and that's not what you're looking for. So if you have a lightweight fabric, definitely use the narrower version of a two needle cover stitch versus the wider version. But if you've got a sturdier fabric or a beefier fabric, like even a fleece or something very heavy, a wider version of the cover stitch would definitely be an option. Try out both ways, see which one you like the best. But next we are gonna go to how to get the machine set up for a chain stitch.